Welcome to another contribution for Utopian. We will continue with the course LibreOffice Macros. Today we will see how to manipulate cells. For that I have already prepared some macros and a calculation book. In the first procedure we will see how to extract the information of the position and cell address. For this I have already created three objects, OComp, OCell and ODoc and a more O-cell other object to which I am assigning a cell type structure of the table that refers to my spreadsheet. To ODOC I assign this component. Remember that this object refers to the active book. To the object OCOMP I assign a structure of the calculation table cell other convert. To the object OCell I assign a cell of the active book of the sheet with the index 0 the cell with position 1,1. One, one. LibreOffice Calc interprets each of the cells based on their position in columns and rows. In this case, the first argument indicates the column number. The second argument indicates the row number. In the argument, reference is made to the column with the index 1. We must take into account that the columns begin to come from 0. That is, we are referring to column B. In the second argument, we refer to the row with index 1. Crossing the reference, we are referring to the cell B2. Later, we use the property getCellAddress to rescue it by means of the object OComp. In this way, we manage to save the address in the object OComp in this property address. There are two ways we have to print the information. One is through user interface representation and the other is through persistent representation. Let's execute the procedure. As a first result, we obtain B2, which is representation of the interface. Subsequently, after giving a accept, now show us the persistent representation. This representation tells us more about the structure. It tells us that this cell is located on page 1 and then give us the name of the cell B2. Another way to extract information from the address is through the cell address structure. Using this structure, we will assign the same cell. Now we will print the sheet. Column and row properties. These are properties of com sun start table cell address. We are going to execute it. It tells us cell B2. Subsequently, hoja 1 point B2 that corresponds to this other line. Later, it indicates me the index of the spreadsheet. We must remember that the index in LibreOffice Calc starts from 0. Now give us a 1. This one refers to the column. Finally, it gives us another 1, because we are in row 1. Let's now execute the procedure with a different cell. For example, the cell with position 2,4, this will refer to the cell with column 2, that is, column C, and the row with index 4, that is, the region that is shown on the interface with the number 5. We are going to execute it. As you can see, it shows me cell C5. It tells me that we are located in the first page, in the column with index 2, and in the row with index 4. By the following example, we will know how to extract the information of the type of content that has a cell. I declare a cell type variable as a string type. I will save the cell type information to print it later. Now I declare the OCell object to which I will assign the active cell from the sheet with zero index. The cell with position 0, 0, that is cell A1. Now, through a select case, I will evaluate what type of cell we have. For this, I am helped by the cell's own get type methods. The cell types are com point sun point star point table point cell content type point empty that refers to an empty cell, com point sun point star point table point cell content type point value that refers a cell with a numeric value, com point sun point start point table point cell content type text point, point text that refers to a cell with a text string com point sun point star point table point cell content type point formula 
that refers to a cell that contains a formula. Finally, if we don't obtain any of these types, we assign the cell type string the unknown value. We are going to execute the procedure. Remember that we refer to cell A1. As you can see, it indicates that it is empty. We are going to enter a text string and execute the procedure again. It shows me that it has a content of type text. Now I will enter a number. After running the procedure, it shows me that it has a value type content. Now I'm going to introduce a formula. I execute and it tells me that it contains a formula. Let's now turn this procedure into a function. The function will receive a cell and return a string. When I use this function, it will return the type of cell as a text string. Now we create one more function. This function all receives a cell and returns a string. This function returns a simple cell info string, which is more elaborate. First, it indicates the absolute name of the cell. Here we see another way to get the name of the cell displayed by the interface. Now, we introduce the text string has type. We will now use the function we created earlier to obtain the cell type. Now we enter the text string and in parentheses the result of the get string method. This will return which is the text string that contains the cell. Analogously, we will show the result of the get value method between the value text string. This will give us the value assigned to the cell. Finally, we introduce the text string formula and in parentheses the result of the get formula method. In the following examples, we will see how to enter content in the cells. We declare the OCell ODOC objects and the text string S. Later, we assign ODOC the active book. To OCell, in this case, we are assigning the cell with position 0, 0 of the sheet with 0 index. That is, we are assigning cell A1. To enter a text from basic, we will use the setString method. Using OCell, we will indicate the cell to which we will assign the text by helping us with the set string method, introducing the text string in parentheses. In this case, I use the simple cell info function to obtain the information of the cell in the text string S, and then print that string using an a msg box. Let's execute the procedure. First, we notice that you have entered the text string indicated in the set string. Now, let's see the information that the message box shows. We have indicated cell A1 of the first page. The content type is text. The content of the string property is Andy. The content of the value property is zero. And the content of the formula property is Andy. Let's go to the next example. In the following example, we have a structure very similar to the previous procedure. Only this time we will use the cell with column 1 and row 0, that is cell B1. For this procedure, we don't assign any value, therefore the content type should be empty. We see the name of the cell correctly indicated, the cell type is empty, the string property is empty, the value property acquires the value 0 and the property formula is empty. It is important to note that the value property is assigned to zero when we have a text string or an empty cell. Let's go to the next example. Now we are using the same cell again, that is cell B1. Using the set value method, we assign a value to the cell, using that value as an argument. Let's execute it. We note that the indicated value has been entered in the cell B1 and the string value and formula properties have acquired the same value. In the following example, we are going to introduce a number in the cell with position 2,0, that is cell C1, but in this case with the set string method. As expected, when entering a number as a text string, the value property is assigned to 0 while the other properties are filled with a 4. For the next procedure, we will use the cell with position 3,0, that is cell C1. Now, let's introduce a formula. We will use the setFormula method. 
The formula must be entered as an argument of the method and enclosed in quotation marks. We can use any formula that we would use directly in calc. When executing, it indicates in the string property the value Andy. In the value property, the value 0 and in the property formula the value equal a1. In value, the value 0 is assigned because we are assigning a formula that assigns a text string. Let's try assigning a numeric value using the formula. Let's assign cell b1 then. As we see now, the string property has the value 23.2. The value property also contains the value 23.2 and the formula property has equal b1. It is important to note that in the property value we obtain the result of the value of the formula. Now we delete the contents of a cell. For this, we must first indicate the cell to be deleted, which shows the cell 3,0, which refers to cell C1. Now using the set formula method, we will introduce an empty formula. Let's execute the procedure. As you see, automatically the cell type changed to empty. The string property becomes empty, the value property takes the value 0, and the formula property becomes empty. Let's now try to add the cells that we have modified. This should give us an error because we can't add strings with numbers. In this case, we will use cell A2 with the formula equal A1 plus A2 plus A3. Let's execute the procedure. Naturally, in the string, we obtain the own error when the types don't match. In the value property, we have 0 and in the formula property, the formula that we previously introduced. Now, let's make the addition directly with the value property. In this procedure, to all dog, I assign the active book. I assign the first page of the active book to all sheet. To all cell, I assign the cell with position 0, 1, that is cell A2. Now to all cell, that is to cell A2, I assign a value to it using the set value method. This value is the sum of all the value properties of cells A1, B1, and C1. These values are obtained through the O sheet object. Let's execute the procedure. We have obtained the value 23.2. We have not obtained any error. We note that the cell is now of the value type and in all its properties the value 23.2 has been assigned. We have now found a way to add cells that even contain text strings without having any errors. The drawback is that for this sum to be executed, the procedure must be executed. It is not done in real time as it happens with the formulas in calc. However, using events, we could get it to run automatically. But that is the subject of another video. Well, I hope you found this video useful. See you!